So hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel Learn with Gigs. Today I will be focusing on the questions that are being asked in the data modeling part in Power BI. But before that, I would recommend you to see the first part of this video series which is focused on Power Query topic. I would also provide the link in the description box. So go and check out the video first. Let's start the video without wasting any time. This is the first question on modeling part. Why do we not prefer many to many relationship? What can be done to resolve it? And can you give an example? So you have to answer like this. Many to many relationship may give us the ambiguous results. So we do, don't prefer it in our model. You can also say that I have tested it personally and we sometimes get the ambiguous results. So we don't prefer many to many relationship. You can add this point also. Now, what can be done to resolve it? We can introduce a bridge table which will contain a column with all the unique list of values of the column through which both the tables have many to many relationship. So getting my point. So the column which we with which the both tables were connected, we will use that column, collect all the unique values from both the tables and store it in a bridge table and use it to resolve this many to many relationship problem. And for example, you can mention that a customer can buy many products and a product can be bought by many customers. So in this way, customer column can have many to many relationship. Let's so the next question is, why do we not prefer bi-directional filtering in the model and what can be done to resolve it? So bi-directional filtering causes performance issues if the model size is big. So if suppose your model size is huge, so in that case, we should not consider bi-directional filtering. But if your model size is small, then we can go ahead and use the bi-directional filtering also. So that is the case. And to resolve this bi-direction filtering problem, we can make use of cross-filter DAX function to achieve any kind of calculation, which requires us to change the filter direction to be bi-directional. So we can make use of cross-filter DAX function to calculate any kind of measure that we want to. Let's move to the third question. What are relationship modifiers and how will we handle two relationships, one active and the other inactive at the same time? So, First, you have to answer what are relationship modifiers. So the functions which can be used to modify the relationship in the model are called relationship modifiers. OK, so sometimes it happens that when the two tables are connected, we have multiple relation between those two tables. And as you know, we can only have one active relationship at a time. So suppose if you want to use that second inactive relationship, what can be done? So for that, we can use use relationship DAX function in our calculation to achieve the desired result. So in this way, you can answer this question. Let's move ahead with the next question. What is the difference between dimension and fact table and what are their different types? So this question is very important for you all because interviewers might ask you this question to test your data warehousing knowledge also. So you should consider this question very important. So dimension tables, dimension means the master data that doesn't change frequently and the table that describes the dimensions involved are called dimension tables. So in this way, you have to answer this dimension tables definition. And if you talk about the types, so we have five types of dimension tables, slowly changing dimension, degenerate dimension, conform dimension, junk dimension and role playing dimensions. They might also ask you about these categories also. So I would recommend you to just Google these types and just prepare one or two lines for them also so that you can answer it in the interview. Now, what is fact table? A fact is a measure that can be summed, averaged or manipulated. A fact table contains two types of data, a dimension key and a measure. Dimension keys are the ones with which these fact tables are connected to the dimension tables and a measure means transaction data. So fact table basically compromises of the dimension keys as well as the transaction data that is measures. And we have four types of fact tables that is additive fact, semi-additive fact, non-additive fact and factless fact. So I would also recommend you to Google these four types also that as they might ask you what are factless fact, fact tables or non-additive fact tables. So just Google and prepare one or two lines for these types also. Let's move to the next question. What is the difference between star and snowflake schema in the model view? This is a very common question that are being asked nowadays in the interviews for Power BI developer position. So the star schema, each dimension in a star schema is represented with one dimension table having a set of eight attributes. 
the fact table is at the center which contains the keys to every dimension table as i explained in other, in the earlier question also and the attributes like unit sold quantity etc so in this way you have to answer what is the star schema the overall structure looks like a star schema where a fact table is present at the center and the dimension table surrounds the fact table in the form of a star so when to use this star schema so it is safe to use this schema when fact table constitute 80 80% or more of the data so when your model is totally dependent on your fact table or your data is mostly comprised in the fact table then you should go ahead with the star schema now where 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 does snowflake schema comes the dimension tables in this schema are normalized that is split it into additional tables and we have less redundant data and rest of the things are similar to star schema so basically what happens in snowflake schema whenever our dimension tables are very huge so we should not we should we should normalize it so that we can split it into some different tables and the overall of efficiency or performance of the model increases so for that we use snowflake schema and this schema can be used when dimension tables are huge in size as i have told earlier let's move to the next question and which is the last question on this topic what is a composite model so a model having combination of tables with import mode connection mode as well as direct query or live query connection mode is a composite model thank you guys for watching the complete video i hope you are learning a lot through this video series please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and stay tuned for the upcoming videos thank you